Hello, I am Wonder001, and this is my review of the Ecovac DBot N79S. This is a robot vacuum, so very similar to a Roomba. However, after doing some research, most robotic vacuums nowadays are very similar in form function. And they might have a couple of features that others don't that make them a little more desirable, but if you are looking to pay a lot less for a robotic vacuum than a Roomba, you've come to the right place. Now, what you're looking at is the vacuum itself. Its dimensions I will put down in the description area. Just think of it as you're looking at something that's a little bigger than a Frisbee and has a depth or height of about 3.1 inches. So this is a nice low profile thing. It will get under furniture, which is something that you're going to want to consider. And I will explain a little bit more in this review. So in the box, you get the D-Bot itself, its charging stand, which you can see there, as well as the plug. Uh, you'll notice that there's a little cutout up there at the top. That is for the included remote control. And, you know, comes with the batteries for the remote, which is nice. Uh, don't normally keep it in the stand because, well, it defeats the purpose of having to go over and grab the remote. If I just touch the top of the D-Bot, it will start. So why would I keep the remote there? Odd choice in manufacturing, but I digress. It also comes with a cleaning tool. And once I flip the D-Bot over, you will know why you need a cleaning tool. So the initial charge time for the D-Bot is four hours. That's recommended out of the box. Uh, I have found that charging generally is between three and a half to four hours after that. Now you're supposed to get a runtime of a hundred minutes. Through my testing using both the max mode, which I'll explain a little later, and regular mode, I would get anywhere between 55 minutes to an hour for the max mode, and for just regular cleaning, an hour, 10 minutes to an hour. So not quite the 100 minutes that they're prescribing. I don't know if that's because the lithium ion battery in this particular model that I have is not up to snuff, but the time that I get while cleaning is perfectly acceptable because, well, I have a lot of cats. Well, I have two cats that shed a lot. So we're gonna flip the D-Bot over so you get an idea of what's going on underneath and uh, start from there. All right, taking the D-Bot off its stand and flipping it over, what you see here are the bin in the back. I'll take that out a little later. The main roller brush, your side wheels here, which are independent of each other. So you'll notice I'm pushing down on either or, and they're just moving. These are rubberized and highly textured, so it's very nice and grippy and helps it roll over things. You have your side brushes here, and these side brushes will wear out a lot faster than the main brush. That's just the way it's designed. You've got a roller ball up here, which swivels and pivots, and sensors that are a little tricky to see uh, this far out, so let me zoom in a little bit here. So you've got several sensors, one on each side and then one on the front. So these are your anti-drop. And if you pick the D-Bot up while it's running, it will turn itself off. So those are what those sensors are part of, but it also has the anti-drop. Now, I do not particularly, well, I do not have any stairs in my apartment. So I had to go in the hallway and test out if the anti-drop worked. And let me show you, because it does work. Coming back to the bottom here, the, the main roller brush, you do have to clean, but it's easy to clean because it has these tabs here that you just push and the door flips open. Now you notice there is a little dust right there, which is now floating to the bottom, uh, and the roller brush itself just pops out. Now I did not clean this after the last time I used it because I wanted to show you on camera how dirty it can be. Now you'll notice even in the area where the brush was, there's a little hair collection from my, uh, my cats there. Inside here, there is a channel full of teeth, which is part of the cleaning process. The brush itself, the main brush, is made up of both a rubberized, which is covered in this hair at the moment, rubberized flipper part, as well as a standard bristle uh, that you would find on most vacuums. Now, for the most part, you can just kind of pull the hair off, but
But if you need to, like I said, remember, it comes with this cleaning tool, so you can kind of get into the bristled area with the cleaning brush. It also has this razor blade, so let's say like over here where there's hair wrapped around it, you can kind of get underneath that hair and just cut it with the uh, razor to untangle it. Now, it might be hard to see on camera, I'll try and focus. Longer hair tends to get wrapped around the ends, while the shorter hair, especially for my cats, gets caught up in the brush hair. So what I'm gonna do quickly is clean this off and show you the brush clean. And there we go, after a quick cleaning, it looks a little better. Now, this is a vacuum, so it's going to be dirty. You're gonna to have to realize that you're not gonna get this absolutely clean. Now, I have been using the D-Bot here N79S for about four months, so it has four months, four months worth of wear and tear. One side of the roller does not actually pivot while the other does. That's how you'll always know how it goes back in. You don't have to worry. One side just has a channel. The other side has a hole that you actually slip that into. So if you are concerned about not knowing which side goes where, your stationary side goes into the hole while the side that can roll goes here on the right. You just have to shift that down and there you go. It's back into place and then this just flips down and drops into place and there you go. It is back up and running. Now, it's a little tricky doing a lot of this around the camera with so many wires, but that's the general idea. Up top here, you have the two charging pads. You do have to kind of keep those clean as well as the sensors on the side. I did run into an issue where the app, which I'll show you a little later, popped up with a notification saying that the sensors had an issue and that you need to clean them off, as well as I had a bumper issue at one time, which just really was going in and wiping off the sensors on the front. Now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna pick up the D-Bot here and show you the back end. This is, again, where the catch is. All it is is a push button. You push it button and it pulls out. And this is your dustbin. It's a fairly large size. It's pretty nice. It has a double filter system on the top here so you can open this up and then you've got a fabric or paper filter and then a secondary filter down there to kind of help mitigate dust. The bin itself, you push the button down again and it opens up. You'll notice that it is dusty because, well, I clean a lot. Right there, this is another filter that pulls out. You can bang it off on the dust can, uh, garbage can to clean it off or you can run this underwater, let it dry fully and then put it back in if you really need to give it that deep down clean. Now. The dustbin is one thing that I wish would have been a little different, and I realize because it's a cheaper uh, robot, they don't do this, and I don't know if any of the other ones do either, but I wish that there was a, a sensor or something that would tell you when this was full, because I have a lot of cat hair, and there were times where it was completely full and probably not picking up anything extra because there was just no more space in the bin. So generally, my living room, I run the D-Bot, uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then on the weekends, I run it in the bedroom because, well, the cats are in the bedroom, but they're not in the bedroom as much as they are in the living and dining area. So in the bedroom, since I only do it once a week, I set an alarm to stop the D-Bot after 20 minutes to empty the bin uh, because it's full and then start it again. Now, the beauty of having the D-Bot and the reason that it gets so much more hair then vacuuming in my bedroom is, well, my cats go under my bed and my vacuum cleaner, being an, uh, a Dyson, uh, is kind of big and can't fit under my bed. Now, I've, I've used the Dyson once under my bed where I actually took off my mattress and the box spring and vacuumed it. I did that once in the six years that we lived in this house. So this goes under there and, and takes care of that problem for me, which is really nice. But it also means that the bin gets filled up faster. To put it back, you just slip it back into place Thusly, push the button down, you're good to go. Obviously, you'd be doing this when the D-Bot is in a flat position. We're gonna come across to the side here, and you're gonna notice this is actually the, uh, the vent, so when it's suctioning stuff up, it blows out air through here. So I've done a lot of talking about the, the D-Bot itself. How about I show you what its maiden vacuuming looked like? All right, first time using the D-Bot N79S. I vacuumed the house first with my Dyson pet 
vacuum uh, review over there. But we're going to see if it can pick up anything else and uh, see how long it lasts. So it is currently 1.49 p.m. and we're just going to tell it to auto and go out and vacuum and see how long it lasts and see if it can make it back to its little corner station there. So here we go. So it randomly is going to go around the house. It's fairly quiet. It's on the standard setting. There's no rhyme or reason to where it's going to go. It's just going to bounce around. Uh, and when it gets close to something, it's supposed to stop before it hits it. Or, in that case, the leg of my tripod was too thin for the sensors to notice. So it has a little bump guard up front. Just like that. And it doesn't go terribly fast, so it's not going to really damage anything. There we go. See, that leg was large enough for the sensors to notice. And we'll just watch it go over here. Now, I did clear most of the ground obstructions from it. Cords, cables, uh, cat blanket. So, it does have free reign. The cats have not noticed it as of yet, but I will be sure to film uh, their interaction with it once that happens. All right, so there it's going around their scratching post. And like I said, there's no uh, rhyme or reason as to where it's going to go. But here, it's heading towards a place that I cannot get with my vacuum, which is underneath my entertainment center there. So it probably sensed some cables that were down there and decided not to go in too deep. But we'll uh, just watch what it does and see what happens. Now there, you can kind of see some... Uh, cat hair that was left by my other vacuum because that's generally where I stop it but there it goes it's doing its thing so we'll just let it keep on keeping on and uh, see how it does see how long it lasts too already tell there's cat hair in here. So, yeah. And look at that. As after vacuuming. And that's what the filter looks like. So in that picture, or in that video, you also saw that my cat was not exactly pleased with the D-Bot. I will say, since we've been using it for four months, they pretty much just don't care anymore unless it's coming right for them. In the rest of the time, they'll just lie down and just watch it do what it's doing. So they're not as scared as they were before. I will also say that the amount of dirt that this picked up even after running the uh, the Dyson was primarily because this was getting under my entertainment center, which I could not get with my Dyson and the cats do hang out under there. So that is a 
benefit to the DBOT. Now, what I will say is the DBOT does not replace actual vacuuming. You still will on occasion have to actually vacuum, but the DBOT will help you keep up with the maintenance of vacuuming. So all that, that hair that uh, hangs out, this can get easily, it, it gets debris as well, but it does not get uh, cat litter deep in the carpet. I still have to run my Dyson every now and then to get that but I was not running the Dyson as much as I should have. And with this, I vacuumed three times a week and once on the weekend. So that's cool. Now I understand it might be hard to tell from those clips just how loud the, the D-Bot here actually is. And on paper, it has a noise level of 67 decibels when in normal mode. And when in max mode, it has a noise level of 70 decibels. Both are tolerable when watching TV or holding a conversation. I had originally thought that this was gonna be a lot louder and had anticipated getting it to annoy my neighbors downstairs because they were annoying me, but it's too quiet to do that. But I still get to vacuum a lot, so that, that's, that's a plus. So let's talk about the ways that you can start your D-Bot. There are several with this particular model. One being the remote, and the remote has several options. You have charge, auto, and this is a nice handy remote that will let you play with the direction of the D-Bot, like you can control where it goes. If you select auto and then try and use the buttons. That's how you can get it to keep going in a direction and just guide it using the buttons. Play pause. You also have e bot timer, single spots. Kind of get a good idea there based on the, what you see on the carpet, what spot cleaning does. Just kind of picks a center spot and just slowly pulls out and makes the circle bigger. Small room, Wi Fi, and edge. Edge. And all it'll do there is just keep tapping across the edge as it finds it. And that's a cattail. So there, once it reaches the end, it'll bounce and try and find the edge. And there you can see, no problem transitioning from the linoleum to the uh, carpet. Now, this is only one way that you can do it. You can also use application, which I'm going to show you on your smartphone a little later. You can also press that auto button on the top. Now, pressing the auto button on the top only has it clean in auto mode. So you can't have it do edging or single spot. It, it just, or small room, it just goes into auto mode. You can also use Amazon Alexa. I'm trying to keep from actually going off uh, to tell this to start charging. The commands are ask DBot to start cleaning or ask DBot to start charging. I've gotten to the point where I can tell DBot to start charging because I was, I don't know, asking it to start cleaning was just a little weird for me. Another way that I've kind of found is if you lose power. I lost power the other night right before doing this video and it was wandering the house, not cleaning, but just wandering like it was looking for the charging station. So that's something to be aware of because there is a power switch on the side here. Now, obviously for demonstration purposes, I've left the power switch off. Uh, 
if you leave it on, which is how you can activate it with the remote and with the, your voice and the app, you have to leave it in on position. And if you lose power, it starts looking for the power source. You can also plug directly into the D-Bot itself if you don't want to use the charging station. But realistically, you want the charging station. That's why you've got this particular model. Now, you might be asking yourself what the difference is between the N79S and the previous model, the N79. Well, realistically, there's only two. Max mode, so better suction if you need it, and the Amazon Echo integration. If you can live without those, you can get the slightly cheaper model. So I've mentioned the application. Let me show you what the app looks like and what you can do with it. All right, on your main screen here, you will see any DBOTs or DBOT products that you have listed. Right now, I only have the N79S. If you come over to the three dots, it will give you an assortment of options, including private information. So sadly, we'll not be showing you that. Coming over here to the plus sign, if you select the plus sign, this is how you get to add an Ecobee bot. So you just would scroll down the list and follow the instructions, after which your bot is added here. Selecting your individual bot will bring up the remote for that particular bot. In the case of my N79S, you have a little remote control. Currently it is docked, you know that because it has a green lightning bolt up there. This will change as the power gets used while it's vacuuming to the point where you will see a single red one when it's time for it to charge. Notice it says status on standby. If we were to select hypothetically auto, I've sent the command to the D-Bot to start cleaning. It's pulling itself off and now you can see the status says cleaning. I'm going to change it so that it goes back and recharges itself mainly because I have not emptied the bin since last time I vacuumed. You have a directional remote right here. The directional remote does not work if it's in auto edge or you have to actually just use the remote to send it around. So if you're in auto, this will turn itself off completely. In fact, you probably saw it gray itself out once I hit auto. Buttons up there, you have vacuum power. So you can select max or standard. Last time I was using max, it does remember that when you have it on auto. You really don't need max all that often, but it's for heavier debris, maximum suction power. Cleaning schedule, now cleaning schedule is useful and what I was originally getting this for was I was going to get the D-Bot and have it clean periodically throughout the day. Well, the problem with that is it did get hung up a couple times when I was testing it, so. front wheel got hung up there. Using this during the day, probably not the best idea. Also, I was planning on using it to annoy my downstairs neighbors, but the RoboVac is a, little, is a lot quieter than I had given it credit for. But if you want to use this when you're around, you can come up here to the plus sign and you can schedule a specific time and then you can set it to, all right, so let's hypothetically say 2009 on Monday, so it repeats every Monday, or you can say every Sunday, Monday, to blah, blah, blah. So we will say every Monday and go back and hit this check mark. Now it has locked in a schedule. You can see there is a schedule now toggled for every Monday at 2009. It will go out and do its thing. Now you can toggle that on and off. And you probably can't hear, but it is beeping on the robotic vacuum itself as it acknowledges this command. So if you wish to delete, you just swipe to the side and select delete and it clears the schedule. Now you can have schedule set up and a different schedule set up for every day of the week. We're going to go back. So consumable usage. So each of the brushes, the side brushes, the main brush and the filters all have a lifespan. Here's how you see the uh, manufacturer suggested lifespan. Uh, side brushes, I'll tell you, probably are going to die a lot quicker than this main brush is pretty hardy and resilient. So all of these were at 100 when I got it. Uh, so as you can see, only 90%, you probably eke out much more uh, off of the main brush. Filters, I would probably go with recommended. Even after cleaning them, they do look like they will uh, take a lot of wear and tear, but will need to be replaced a little more regularly than I had anticipated. There's a reset button down there. So if you want to reset all of those, hypothetically, when you get new ones and put them in, that's where you could do it. Here you can rename it. So if you don't like DBOT N79S, you can change it to something else. Now, what I will say is that uh, you cannot change the 
echo command to tell the dbot to go out and uh, start cleaning. So it will forever be blah, 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 ask dbot to start cleaning or blah, 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 tell dbot to charge. Now, at first it was very specific where I needed to say ask dbot to do something. And it eventually let me say, just tell dbot to do something. I want it to do something. Last but not least is find dbot. Clicking that, hopefully you heard off camera. I don't know, have a lapel mic on. Uh, you click on that and it will pulsate, beep, 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 from the dbot so that you can locate it. So if it gets stuck under a bed and you're not sure, clicking that will let you find it. And that is it for the dbot app. You've seen a lot about this. Let me talk about some, some weird talking points. I have noticed with uneven carpeting, it does skip a little, and I think that's partially due to the brush the, the main brush. Now, you'll also notice that the main brush is not the width of the entire unit. So while it might miss something on its initial sweep, remember, this is gonna run for until the battery needs to be charged. So it will come back and get something. Don't worry if you don't get it on the initial pass by. If you have a door open to your deck, it will go out there. It has done that for me. Started cleaning the deck, didn't need to clean the deck. Another thing, is using the remote. If it's in auto mode and you use the remote to try and tell it what to do and you push too many buttons too quickly, you can lock up the device where it just starts going beep, 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 don't know what to do. Auto mode is nice if you just wanna set it and forget it. The remote or the app is nice if you wanna give it to your kids and have them play a little game cleaning the house. So those are a lot of features, that's a lot of uh, points. I said it was cheaper than a Roomba, so the question is how much cheaper? Well, the normal price for the DBot N79S is $250. I got it on a lightning deal for $179 on Amazon. And it's a robot vacuum. It's been something that I've had on my like wish list for the longest time, but just could not justify paying the amount for a Roomba. So this made it entirely possible to get a robot vacuum for cheaper. And it has been well worth it, I assure you. If you've wanted a robot vacuum but been hesitant and you're slightly scared of buying something that would be considered an off-brand, I highly recommend checking out the DBot N79S here, especially if you want that Amazon Echo integration, which is just great to be lazy and sit on your couch and say, blah, 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 tell DBot to start cleaning, and it does it. It's awesome. So I have been Wanderer 001. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching.